Hello, my name is Matthew Petrusik, and I am the Survey Pinkeyer Fellow of Catholic Ethics at the Word on Fire Institute. Imagine possessing the power to advance your political goals simply by incanting a spell-like litany of endlessly ambiguous words that supply immediate and unquestionable moral supremacy over your ideological rivals. Terms like anti-racism, intersectionality, homo and or transphobia, white privilege, misgendering, patriarchy, triggering, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Imagine being able to assert that mere disagreement with your self-defined community's political position is conclusive proof of your critics' intellectual confusion and moral corruption. Imagine society granting you the authority to proclaim that your self-described lived experience can trump all contrary evidence and that the declaration, this is our truth, is sufficient to supply you with fawning media coverage, lavish corporate sponsorship, and even civil legislation to protect and advance your political aims. Imagine a world with no objective rationality below and only a utopian intersectional sky above. A world in which winning an argument is as simple as silencing your opponents and silencing your opponents is as simple as calling them dirty names. Imagine, best of all, being able to use every economic, political, and social benefit of the system while openly calling for the system's dismantling. Yes, that's right. Heads you win, tails everyone else loses. If group dominance is the name of the game, who would turn down those odds? All this and more defines contemporary progressive ideology, also frequently referred to as wokeism or, or being woke. Before exploring the philosophical, or I should say anti-philosophical roots of this ideology and how the Catholic social thought tradition can, and I believe should respond, it is important to highlight that though the focus of this lecture series is on progressivism, the Catholic social thought tradition is critical of all, all political ideologies, including utilitarianism, classical liberalism, libertarianism, and uh, what I would call non-theistic conservatism, or conservatism severed from a biblical conception of God and morality. There is plenty of constructive criticism to go around the ideological landscape. This lecture series is not, let me repeat, not an argument against one ideology just to be in favor of another one. The concern here, however, is progressivism or wokeism, and the reason is practical, even urgent. Progressive ideology has not only been ascendant in the past decade, based upon its pervasiveness in higher education, entertainment, corporate HR and marketing departments, journalism, professional sports, nonprofit foundations, and even the government itself, you could say that it has become the dominant ideology in the United States and much of Europe. Now, while a host of competing ideologies remain contenders for the throne, by the measure of sheer cultural influence, progressivism has scrambled to the top of the ideological heap and planted its, its garishly discordant flag in triumph. A temporary and waning triumph, perhaps, but uh, a triumph nonetheless. And all of us are living the consequences. Thus, this lecture series, The Idolatry of Identity, Progressive Wokist Ideology, and the Catholic Response. To understand what defines contemporary progressive ideology, it is, it is first important to understand what makes it attractive. Let me emphasize two responses, one already not so subtly suggested in the opening. Gaining socio-political power for one's identity group. It is vital to stress, however, that there's a non-cynical reason progressive ideology can be attractive as well. For all its faults, which this lecture series will catalog and analyze, 
Progressivism can also appeal to those who have a sincere concern to address social injustice, which could be broadly defined as systematic discrimination that targets groups solely on the basis of one or more morally irrelevant, usually immutable characteristic, like, like sex or skin color or ethnicity. Denying women the right to vote on the grounds of being women or denying black individuals the right to full participation in society because of their skin color are two obvious historical examples of social injustice. In upcoming lectures, I will highlight how Catholic social thought not only takes the problem of social injustice seriously, but contains the intellectual and moral resources to take it even more seriously and be more effective in addressing it than the ideological alternatives, including progressivism. It is in examining progressivism's conception of power, however, that most effectively reveals its intellectual foundations and its moral logic. Indeed, it is fair to say that power, acquiring, expanding, and maintaining it is the, is the one thing that unites the ideologies otherwise wildly disparate, even contradictory strands. Indeed, perhaps unique among political ideologies, progressivism has, has no single easily identifiable philosophical foundation. For this reason, I call it the, the Frankenstein of political ideologies. It is, it is comprised of bits and pieces of scavenged parts from other political theories, including obscure academic ones that were once safely contained behind university walls. This uh, bricolage of ideas, however, has now amassed into an unwieldy intellectual monstrosity broken out of the ivory tower and is currently stomping, highly motivated, but aggressively disoriented, through every institution in society, swallowing those whose power it can absorb, like well-meaning but naive social justice advocates, while seeking to crush those who oppose it. So how can we understand and begin to assess progressivism's conception of power and, and equally important, how it exercises that power on society? In the next few lectures, I'll be identifying and examining some of the ideological components that constitute progressivism. Though not exhaustive, I aim to show how progressivism both appropriates and distorts competing political theories and then, and then yokes those distortions into the service of a particular group's self-interest. The theories we'll be looking at include classical liberalism and libertarianism, utilitarianism, postmodernism, and post-colonialism. See you in the next lecture. <laughs>